breaking news this afternoon. Today, we are set to complete another signing for the summer by signing Ugo Chukru for 30 million euros from Stard Ren. So in today's video, I'm going to break down these reports. I'm going to explain the significance behind this move and I'm going to give you guys a player analysis so you can understand exactly who this target is. So my friends, I hope you guys most definitely enjoyed today's video. Hit that like button if you guys are excited and taken by surprise by this news. Let's try and get over 3k likes. And make sure you guys stay tuned for my predicted 11 video before our game against Fulham tomorrow evening. So my friends, hope you enjoy it. But before we get into anything, today's video is brought to you by OneFootball. Now when stories like this come from absolutely nowhere, this is where OneFootball acts as your best friend, yeah? Because I'm going to get a bit of a brief understanding behind Leslie and his game using one football. Obviously, not only am I getting the latest stories that's dropping around this club, but obviously with this news around Leslie, let's actually break down some of his game to understand who he is. So if I search Ren here, I'm going to star them to stay up to date to the latest news around them. We click here, we go to squad, we scroll down to the midfields and we click on Leslie who got a crew, 19 years old. He's at least 6'2", 6'3". Cap for the French under-19 squad as well too. Let's look at the latest news around him. Now we can see how his career has been going so far. Of course, 60 games for Rennes since making his debut at 17 in 2020. So my friends, this is where One Football acts as a very handy companion app for moments like this. So what are you guys waiting for? Download One Football. You'll find a link below in the description and on the QR code on the screen too. Right now, I need to interrupt things because I've had to update this video like twice now and I'm hoping this is the final time. Because right now, we have agreed a 30 million euro fee to sign Ugo Chukru. Right now, he is set to complete his medical. We don't know yet if he's set to move to Strasbourg on loan. The situation's being assessed and being monitored. There's an opportunity for him to remain here or potentially go out on loan. Ugo Chukru has been omitted from Ren's friendly game today against West Ham. We don't want to risk him getting any injuries whatsoever and it seems like we are set to complete this deal now in the next few hours. Pfft, wow. Now West Sam are interested, they're still looking at Declan Rice replacements and in that sense, it's no surprise that they'd be targeting a profile like him because there are a few similarities actually and I don't know why my voice kind of broke when I like that. But regardless my guys, the reports state that we have been actively negotiating for the past 10 days. And you know, we've always kind of been excited by moves like this where we have no idea what's happening behind the scenes until a story like this comes from absolutely nowhere. And it's like, wow, we are far in negotiations right now. And even though we might be a bit frustrated by how slow business is right now, this is a reminder that nothing is stopping behind the scenes. There's probably more targets and players that we're unaware of right now. And those reports will come out when the club feel confident that deals are close to being struck. Now, it's no surprise why we'd be targeting Leslie right now. Of course, his contract expires in 2025. He's barely earning any money for Ren right now. He hasn't signed a new contract extension. And this is where, under our new transfer strategy, we can take advantage because we're signing someone for young potential, big potential for next to nothing. And we can give this guy significantly lower wages compared to many players that we've sold in this summer window. It's all about performance related contracts and you know what I do feel for young players this is probably the best strategy. Now the reports don't confirm that this move we're making is to sign him and then send him out on loan to Strasbourg. It's believed that we're signing him to add to our first team and I think there's some intelligence behind this. I think number one this is a message now to Brian. But it's like, don't think we're that desperate that Casado is the only player we have in our basket right now. We're Chelsea Football Club. There's other targets of great potential too. And we're more than happy to play the long game with you if you feel like we're going to get pressured into having to pay 100 million right now. Listen, you have a player at your disposal that you promised could leave. He's already agreed terms with us. He's wanted to sign for us since January as well too. The longer you delay things with Casado, the more frustrated he's set to be. And you don't want to be in a position where you have an angry player that doesn't want to be there. And you've wasted the opportunity to replace this guy with an equally talented replacement for Deserbi. You don't want to put Deserbi under pressure after the amazing season you had with him last season. So right now it's looking like we are signing him for our first team squad for next season. And this is where I want to have a separate discussion now around inexperience for next season. Now, I'm of two minds right now. I'm very fluid in my thinking, but you know, it's a quote Pochettino. He said multiple times in recent press conferences, 
I want more experience in this team. Before he signed for us, I covered the stories and mentioned he wanted Premier League experience and we've done the absolute opposite right now. It's kind of crazy to think that if we hopefully sign Casado, him and Enzo will be the de facto most experienced guys in our midfield and the supporting cast is going to be full of guys who are like 19 in Santos and potentially you go Chukwu. You're looking at guys who are going to be 20 and 21 in guys like Khans and Kasaide as well too. It's not the most experienced, right? And I have to keep things real. Obviously, I learned a lot of lessons after last season. And I kind of realized for myself that maybe I have a habit of being a bit too idealistic at times. Of course, when we made some incredible moves last January, I felt like it was a given that we'd be set to climb up the table just like that and we'd complete a remarkable recovery in like securing a Champions League spot. We know what happens, that was a far cry. And as I said, I've realized that I can be a bit too idealistic. Like obviously in a perfect world, if everything falls in line like it should, then how can things not work? But obviously real life never works like that. And most definitely, our football club does not operate on that logic. So this new perspective I have now is making me a little bit concerned over the lack of experience that we have in this squad now for next season, knowing the fact that we're trying to secure Champions League football. But on the other side, you know, I can't just completely kill that idealistic part of me, yeah? I can be a bit more realistic with it though. And it makes me think about the 1920 season. Now, during that season, everyone wrote us off. Most of the fan base had no hopes. It came right after a transfer ban and Eden Hazard left. That was a season where we were given, you know, our first team opportunities to guys like Tamori, Tammy, Mount, Reese James, guys like Billy Gilmore, plus a lot more. And back then, when everyone wrote us off, I kept saying we are still going to get top four because I knew the quality of these guys was way better than people actually realise. And that 1920 season for me was a bit of an iconic season in the sense that there were so many memories and moments, so many highs and lows. But in the end, that young squad beat all the odds and we deservedly got a top four spot. And now it's got me thinking, we're signing some super talents now in Andre Santos, Chukwumeka, plus a host of other players that are coming into this team now at a similar age as your Tammies, Tamoris, etc, etc. What is stopping these guys under Pochettino from achieving something remarkable for next season? Do I feel like the new talents we have right now are worse at the same age as guys like Reese James and Mason Mount were? Absolutely not. Now, Leslie is definitely one for the future. Last season at Wren, he had equal parts when he was starting games, equal parts coming off the bench. Near the end of last season, he was playing more and more games from the bench. But this kid has a lot of moldable potential. And I feel like this move for uh, Ugo Chukwu could be quite intelligent. So my friends, to end things right now, I want to give you guys a bit of a play analysis to understand who he is, strengths and weaknesses, and what to expect if he signs for us this season. Anyway, who is he? He made his debut at 17 years old. He is a left-footed midfield player, that predominantly plays as a lone pivot as a six, but also has box to box capabilities where he can drive forward and of course carry the ball to push his team further up the field. Now obviously at 6-2, 6-3, the guy has very promising athletic capabilities and you know, it's so funny that when you do videos like this, like in real life, I'm just not using sentences like physical capabilities, you know what I mean? But obviously for football talk, you have to gas it a little bit. But in terms of the physical capabilities, I mean, the guy's rangy. He's been drawing some comparisons with a young Patrick Vieira. He covers the ground really quickly. He's got a nice, like, running technique as well, too. And of course, he's one of those guys that likes to use his body to win possession of the ball back. He's not just constantly giving away silly fouls like what Mikel used to do when he was young, where he'd give away a lot of fouls because he wouldn't use his body to win the ball back, he'd be using his legs and trying to tackle from silly angles. I guess the best way to describe him currently based on his current ability is that he's a very effective player. And I mean that in the sense that he's not going to play the easy pass, he plays the most effective pass. And some of you might not like this comparison, but I'd have to say I'm seeing like some similarities between him and like early Mo Declan Rice, where Rice, when he first started, he played very effectively, but as he developed over the seasons, got more responsibility, learned more about the game and improved as a player, he became a lot more than the effective player. And I feel like Ugo Chukwu definitely has this capability behind him. Now, this guy is defensively imposing. You know, he has... Now, this kid is defensively imposing. 
He wins a lot of his 50-50 tackles. And most importantly, he wins those tackles against guys who are dribbling. And for me, what's even more important is where he's winning these tackles. And he's winning them in the middle third, which basically means he's winning them in like the midfield line. And with how Pochettino wants us to play, especially when it comes to protecting those zones, right? You know, we're signing Casella for that reason to unlock Fernandez to play higher up the field. But he's going to have to shut all across the zones left to right to make sure that we are winning that midfield battle. And in that sense, Hugo Chukru complements that style of defending that Pochettino wants to have in his pivot. He plays on the left hand side of a pivot already, or as that long pivot for Ren. And again, most of his carries come from the left hand side. Most of the one two plays passes between the lines. Of course, the ability to receive and have like an open body position are there. But for me, right now, the best thing about his game are his defensive capabilities. I mean, the guy is quite strong aerially already, running like 63% of aerial duels. We do need to have some aerial presence when it comes to defending set pieces and qualities like that. He's tactically aware and he's one of those guys I feel has the potential to play at a higher level because he's a defensive mid that can play past the halfway line. And I want to bring up this comparison, but when Ndidi was bringing it, but when Ndidi of Leicester City was getting tons of comparisons with Kante, yeah, he ranked very high for defensive stats, but I kept thinking this guy can't really play past the halfway line. He's not a one touch, two touch player like he has to be. You know, his decisions with his passing sometimes are a bit off. And he's not very influential past the halfway line. It was like, for me, this guy isn't a top four player. But I think Leslie is completely different. And I think one thing that really encourages me about this kid here is his capability to learn. Now, I'll give you guys some insight behind his like recent player history. Of course, debuted at 17 years old, but he didn't actually start playing as more of a defensive mid until he was 16. And that's when he started to show the Ren management about his potential to play in the first team in the near future. One of the reasons why he is so easily adaptable is, you know, his ability to want to learn. This kid is very humble. Uh, there was an extract talking about um, Joe Rondon, the, the uh, Spurs Welsh defender who was, of course, on loan at Ren. And he was in and out of the team at times. And of course, you know, when you're out of the team, it's very easy to like mentally be a bit weaker, not be as focused and kind of, you know, beat yourself up and be depressed. But Joe's like, listen, you know, keep that mentality high. Keep that mentality strong. When you're needed, you have to be ready. And Ugo was like, this is like a good lesson to learn because I have an ambition to one day play in the Premier League. And I have to understand how to move in scenarios like this. And I think this is why I describe him as like a, an effective player, because it's like everything he learns, like he really wants to utilize in games. I mean, before he started playing as more of a defensive mids, he played more as a striker and more of an attacking mid in his youth days. And the fact that he's transformed this quickly in a new role like this speaks volumes about his intellect. Obviously, he's one of those players that religiously likes to watch his video analysis after games to constantly improve and fine tune his games. And you need to have guys who have this ca capacity to want to learn in your team, especially at a young age. And this is where I get these Declan Rice comparisons because Declan Rice was quite similar at his age too. I look at the player he's become right now. I feel like Leslie can most easily follow the same trajectory in his career. He has the potential already in terms of physicality you know, defensive intelligence and tactical acumen. And of course, the additional ability that he's got on the ball, has the footwork and can carry his teams throughout the field. But as he gets older, he can be a bit more influential, which I think will come as time goes on. He can fine tune every aspect in terms of like closing down passing angles better, not getting taken out of position, being a bit more ambitious sometimes playing forward passes and being a bit more influential if he is able to step past the halfway line, but this will happen over time. You know, he's not a Camavinga at the same age. Those guys are generational, but he's underneath that group where he can become an elite player in his position because of all these positive factors around him. So my friends, that is everything around Leslie Ugo Chukwu. Very fascinating signing, very big surprise, but I think in the long run, this deal can make a lot of sense. So my friends, hit that like button. Share your thoughts and opinions. How do you feel about this guy? Is it the right move? Is it not? Let us know below. And on that note, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later again with the predicted lineup video. So stay tuned. Cool.